Well, once again, we're talking about communion here on Tack Room Devotional, and I'm telling you, this is something special. This is an intimate time with God the Father and Jesus Christ, and I hope you're getting something out of this study. Our reference scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And yesterday we talked about the fact that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Now obviously he's talking about eternal life there, but he's also talking about this abundant life that he gave us. As we study this farther and farther, I'm going to show you that he's not just talking about eternal life, but he's also talking about walking that eternal life out on this earth right now. You can live that life. You can live the life of abundance that he says, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. And we're going to look at that as, as we go through this. Look with me now in verse 25. This is where we're gonna, what we're going to talk about today. It says, In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup, or this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now if you look at Jeremiah chapter 31, 31, and remember, Jeremiah was a prophet of God, so the words that he spoke are God's words himself. And he says in 31, he said, Behold, the days are coming, so thus saith the Lord, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house, house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, Though I was a husband to them, says the Lord, but this covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. So you see the old covenant, we broke. We had a say so in the old covenant. We, had, we could break the old covenant, but the new covenant is made by God. And we're going to find out it's ratified with the blood of Jesus Christ. This is something that's so important for us to understand that you and I can't break his covenant with us. Woo, glory to God. The old covenant he showed you humans are capable of breaking a covenant. And of course the law was our tutor and showed us we could do that. But in the new covenant, which is a covenant of grace, it, it's based upon what he did. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. And again, we're going to talk about that. Look with me at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. It says, but Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, glory to God, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. He redeemed us. He purchased us with his precious blood. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifers sprinkling with uh, the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant, why? Because he's the one that ratified it. He's the one that, that takes care of it all. Our, our sin doesn't determine the new covenant with God. He determines the new covenant. All we need to do is receive it by faith and begin to walk in it. And when you do make a mistake, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Who glory. And here's the amazing, he said it, it will even cleanse our conscience, conscience. So it means that we can't even receive condemnation 
because our conscience is made clear. Wash with the blood of Jesus. I receive that by faith, through grace. I receive that. His grace, his unmerited favor, he did that for you and he did it for me. And all I need to do is receive that. And when we take a communion, we take his, bre- uh, his, his body, which is, again, he's the bread of life. Bread of life, I receive that. And then his, his blood speaks of the new covenant. This is the cup of the new covenant. We're going to talk about this again tomorrow. The cup of the new covenant. This is symbolic speaking of this new covenant that you were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Purchased with a price. Amen. Boy, I don't know how to make it any more simple than that. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you, you diligently seek him and serve him.